What's up, everybody in the YouTube world? This is Chris, a.k.a. Barnon 11970 and as always, thank you for checking out my video. All right, guys, I hope you guys had a great weekend. It was beautiful out, and let's get into this topic, because I get this all the time, either on comments, on videos, or on my Facebook page, or in emails. People are always constantly asking me, how do we get out of this system? And even though I've made several videos about this, it seems that people just do not want to think that it's very simple to do, and people are making it very complicated. Basically, like they say, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. The majority of people these days are basically been programmed to believe that if something is too easy, then you should question it or it doesn't make sense. They want you confused. They want you to think that to get from point A to point B, you have to go all over the place. Because it seems like, well, there's a lot of effort, so it must be true. Doing a straight line straight to and from, well, that seems too easy, so that can't be true. So people don't want to understand, it seems, and that's due to our programming, that simple is better. You know, keep it simple, stupid. That's the way you want to think of it, even though we shouldn't use the stupid part. Keep it simple, sir or ma'am, whatever. But here's the thing I want people to think about, because I always use analogies and they help people put it into proper perspective. Because there are definitely ways that individuals can be out of the system. But if the entire planet is run by corrupt politicians, corrupt bankers, uh, the Vatican, whoever you want to say, aliens, it, it depends on your education or what you want to believe in. But we know that there are powerful people that run things. If you don't believe that at this point, then your head is so far under the sand, you're probably not watching this anyway. But if the whole system is corrupt, how can a few individuals get out of this system? And let me put it as an analogy. Let's say there's a captain on a pirate ship, and he manages to have his crew of 20 men kidnap 500 people and place them on his boat, which they set sail in the middle of the ocean, and they're forced to do labor that they didn't want to do. Now, most people will sit there as they're swabbing the deck or doing whatever chores that they have to do. They're going to sit there and complain, but they're not going to do anything about it because even though there's 500 of the slaves, well, the pirates are all armed. So you think, oh, well, I don't want to rock the boat because I could get hurt. So in other words, they use fear to keep you in line and to volunteer your servitude even though they fraudulently took you without your consent but because you don't contest it you're basically saying okay you have me a gunpoint or knife point I'll, I'll follow you that's a choice everything in life is a choice so let's just say best case scenario one of the slaves says to himself i no longer want to work now, you, meanwhile, you're in the middle of the ocean on a pirate ship, and you just go to the captain and say, listen, I just don't want to work anymore. And let's just say this captain is the nicest captain you've ever had on the history of the planet. And he says, okay, you don't have to work anymore. Where are you going to go? You're on his ship. He's sailing it wherever he wants. And even if you don't want to be part of the system anymore, you're stuck on that boat in the middle of the ocean. In other words, you're not going anywhere and nothing's really changed because your freedom is gone and you're still being controlled. They're just letting a, a person out. So in other words, if one or two individuals or even a couple of hundred or even just a couple of thousand people find some loophole that lets them get out of the system. Well, if you live on a continent run by these politicians and these governments, how are you ever free of their system? You're still on their boat. Now, if all 500 of the slaves decided to say, we're not going to take this anymore, and they all go to the captain and his crew, his small crew, even if they have guns or knives, and all 500 of, 500 of them approach them without any weapons, without anything, and they say, this ends today. We are taking over the ship. You are no longer in charge. And they take all the guns, they throw them in the ocean, and they take over the boat. Now they can go wherever they want, including back home and let themselves off the ship. So when it comes to getting out of the system, it's either all or nothing. And the hypocrisy, even in this truth or movement, 
can sometimes be overwhelming because we talk about unity, but people keep preaching, oh, here's a way to get out of the system for an individual. Instead of everybody realizing that since life is a choice, if we choose to be under this control because we feel safe or they provide us a few little trinkets, well, you can't complain because if you're allowing a few couple of thousand dollars, maybe even a million dollars in your life control you when we know money is nothing more than debt. As long as you live comfortably, you don't mind the suffering around the world. Well, that's not how it has to work. And even if you look at our own constitution here in the corporation known as the United States, and if you're not aware of that, please check the Act of 1871, you're part of a corporation. So where are you going to go if you're out of the system? Because you could throw out your license, you can even give it back to them. But just watch how many times you'll be harassed driving in your vehicle. Even if you're perfectly lawful to do it, they're still going to harass you. They could still have a rogue cop throw you in jail just because he wants to. Or you can get shot. Is it worth it? So if you look at the Constitution, even the corrupt second Constitution they made in the Act of 1871, which people seem to want to ignore, it's through the consent of the governed. That basically means that the masses, even though they're not disputing it, are accepting it through their silence. And if you know anything about law and law definitions, silence is the same as consent. So people can complain, people, people can protest, but they're still accepting it. You know, like they say, I, I don't know who said it, and if you want to leave it in the comment section, you can. There's a famous quote that said, let people march all they want as long as they pay their taxes. So just imagine if you're on that pirate ship, and instead of taking over the boat, you decide to write a bunch of picket signs and say, oh, unfair labor. You're still on the pirate ship in the middle of the ocean, not where you want to be. So you're spending all of your energy writing picket signs instead of actually changing things. Why do you think they allow that? Because it gives the people some sense of, well, I'm making a change, I'm making a difference, because I went down to Wall Street, or I went down to this event, and I held up a sign and said, I don't like what you're doing. You're not changing anything, because they're still in control. They're just allowing you to do that until you get tired and you go away or the weather gets too bad and you go away, or they decide enough is enough, they send a bunch of enforcers there called policemen in military gear and make you go away. So until everybody realizes that they're tired of settling for the few trinkets they give them, and they say instead of a few people profiting off of the many that are suffering, we all combine together and peacefully say, we're taking over this country. We're taking over this planet. We're not going to shoot you because then we're no different or no better than you. What we are going to do is no longer allow you the privilege of stealing from us and taking advantage of us and injuring us and denying us our rights. Because just imagine how many inventions over the centuries have been suppressed or simply bought out Patents, patents been purchased and then never see the light of day. So we talk about, oh, our taxes go to our bridges and roads. Just imagine if Nikola Tesla's inventions back in the late 1800s were allowed to become mainstream. Just imagine where we'd be technologically. People want to settle because it's safe. You know, that's like being in a relationship where the person's abusive, but every now and then they bring you home a nice fancy sports car or they bring you home a bunch of flowers and jewelry. You say, oh, well, you know, he may hit me, he may cheat on me or she may run out on me or she might have an alcohol problem. It goes both ways. But as long as they do things that make me happy, I guess I'll settle because it's safe. You know, I've been with this person for years. I'm afraid to go out and find something new because what if I'm alone? And that's the insecurity. And that's why people will always ultimately be slaves. And there will be people who will profit off of you and there will be people that take advantage of you. It's because the masses, unfortunately, are afraid 
to give up and start over. And it has to be all or nothing. You can't have 10% of the population saying, you know what, we're no longer going to be part of the system because they still control 90% and they'll make plenty of profit off of you. So I know everybody wants this. How do I get out of the system thing? If you think you're out of the system, you are fooling yourself. And that's why there have been slaves for thousands of years. They've just perfected slavery. Because when you're in chains and in bondage and in a prison cell, you understand that you are captured. You are property. And you will do everything that you can to break those chains and set yourself free. What they've done is get you to have credit, borrow what they call money, which is really basically made of nothing but your labor, where you have to pay interest, which they don't create. So it creates a Ponzi scheme that continually has to increase for it to stay alive. They'll allow a few people to profit and profit well, and they'll entertain the rest of you. So while we complain about our bills, while we complain about the air, while we complain about the food, while we complain that overseas people are being murdered and, and famine is going on and there's diseases and people are becoming more depressed and angry, as long as you're entertained, I guess everybody thinks it's okay. And as long as you get yours, who cares if anybody else suffers? But ultimately in the end, united we stand, divided we fall. And that is a great thing to think about, a great quote, because it's not just for this country, it's for the world. If we don't unite, then we fall. And why do you think they spend so much time on the media and in politics talking about things that get you fighting amongst ourselves? I mean, look at the people who come to my channel. They don't like me. They don't like what I talk about, but they will subscribe to my channel and thumb down videos to show me their disapproval. How is that doing anything beneficial in this society, in this world? If they took half of their energy that they use towards hating others and used it for good and helped people, just imagine where this world would be. But there are some people who actually earn a living hurting others. So if you're in politics if you're in the law enforcement and don't understand at this point that you are part of a corporation, part of a scheme, shall we say, and they'll make you profit off of it so you continue to do it, you're hurting your fellow man. And for all those that are religious and believe in God, I say to this to you, you may believe in God, you may believe in Jesus, you may believe in Buddha, you may believe in uh, whatever. But are you practicing what they preach you? Are you being good to one another? I see a lot of hypocritical people who will hold up a Bible and preach a lot of quotes, but they don't follow the word. And isn't that what religion is supposed to be all based on? Is the message? But yet, we'll kill one another if you don't believe in the same person that I believe in. We'll kill people because you don't vote the same way I do. Uh, we'll kill another person because you don't have the same kind of fiat currency as we do. If you want change, everybody has to change. And until people stop being lazy, stop being afraid, stop being satisfied with the bare minimums, or even a little bit more than the bare minimums, and actually change this world, it's going to last forever. Because they've perfected it. And if you don't realize they've done it, then why have we had slaves for thousands of years? Why has there been, for thousands of years, the majority of the planet has been poor, while the few run the show? The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. How do you not see it at this point? And I'm talking specifically, too, to the truther mu movement, the people that say they're, they're there because they're one with the planet, one with the universe. They are light. And yet, they're not doing what it takes. Because as much as it's great to be preaching nonviolence, and I'm the same way, that doesn't mean inactivity. Hugging a tree is a wonderful thing for that tree and may be great for yourself, but it doesn't help the planet. 
And until we get up and say on that pirate ship, thank you for your service, Captain, but we're taking over, or just simply, we're taking over. You don't even have to thank them. You don't have to hurt them. You don't have to throw them overboard. You don't have to shoot them. You don't have to stab them. You don't even have to throw them in jail. You just take away their ability to hurt you and say, we're taking over because we, the many, can control the few. And the powerful people around the world are scared to death of that ever happening. And the mass is actually awakening and saying no more. They're afraid of losing their power. And they'll scare you to live in death. They actually have people convinced that there will be a nuclear war. One nuclear warhead, look what it did to that city in Japan. Two nuclear warheads, look what it did to both cities. Just imagine if all of a sudden Russia, China, India, United States of America, all these countries launch all of their missiles. Do you think those people are that stupid? Because at the very best, they would spend generations and centuries living underground if that's even possible at that point because just imagine if a thousand megaton nuclear bombs drop down on this planet because not for nothing our advancement in weapons is so much better than what it was in Hiroshima and Nagasaki that who's to say it doesn't cause volcanoes and earthquakes and tsunamis and even their underground bunkers get destroyed but at the very least, the air will be destroyed, the water will be destroyed, plants will die, animals will die, and then people will die. But they'll scare you to death, they'll make you think, and you'll even see it on the truth or media, all these fear porn people selling you, oh, nuclear war is imminent. Because it's a form of control, and some people are helping the system even that are trying to help it, or trying to help the people. Nuclear war is never going to happen because the people that have the control of that button, they've had it for, what, since the 1950s? They used it yet? But they'll bluff it. They'll call bluffs every time. And if you play poker, you can only have a person bluff so many times before you call. So if you want to live in fear, you want to be distracted with entertainment, you want to be dumbed down, that's perfectly fine. But you're never going to be free because you're worried about yourself or your family or just a small section of the world instead of everybody. And that's a darn shame. Peace.